So today we're going to learn about arc length and sector area. And you know, just for the fun of it, we're going to also introduce ourselves some radians. So let's start with arc length. You might remember an arc because it looks, well, it's a part of a circle. You might remember that the arc, the measure of an arc is in fact equal to that of its central angle. So if this central angle is 36 degrees, we could say that the measure of the arc was also 36 degrees. Today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to find the length of an arc using this measure along with our good old buddy, the radius. So let's talk about how we do this. The first thing that we need to deal with is we need to find the distance around the entire circle because this is a part of that distance. So we need to first find the circumference. We will leave this in terms of pi. So in this case, remember, circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, and in this case our radius is 10. Now we're going to leave this in terms of pi. What that means is we're going to take the letter pi and it's going to be like it's an x. So like if I said 2 times x times 8, you would just do 2 times 8 is 16 and say it was 16x. So in this case, 2 times pi times 10, that's going to be 20 pi inches. Now, we don't want to put that inches just yet though, because the thing is, it's not the whole circumference that we need. We only need a part of it. Specifically, we need 36 out of the 360 degrees. So what we do is we multiply 20 pi by 36 over 360. Remember, if we're putting this in a calculator, we don't put the pi in there. We just put 20 times 36 divided by 360. And when we do put that in a calculator, we ended up getting 2, and then we bring back the pi inches. And that's how we find arc length. Now let's try it again, but now we're going to talk about sector area. So a sector, in this case, is a part of a circle that's enclosed by the two radii in the arc. So it's the part that we right now are kind of bubbling in. So what I like to think of it as, and especially when I look at this picture, is I kind of think of it as it's like a piece of pie or a piece of pizza. And the arc part is basically the equivalent to just the crust, the distance around. So in this case, the process of finding sector area is basically the same as what we just did for arc length. The only difference is, in this case, we're going to be using area, not circumference, because we're talking about a portion of the area. So remember, portion of the area, that's pi times the radius squared. But in this case, we know that the radius is 10. So that means 100 pi. But once again, that's the whole area, and we only need this part. So if I told you I had had one-tenth of the pi, you'd multiply by one-tenth. In this case, we had 36 out of 360 degrees, meaning it becomes 10 pi inches squared. And that would be our sector area. So here, let's try a couple of them. So what we're going to do right here is we're going to find the arc length and sector area of this example problem. So for arc length, what we end up doing is we take our circumference, which is once again 2 times the radius times pi, that's 22 pi, and we multiply it in this case by 315 over 360. Now you'll notice that's most of it. So what we end up getting here is 19.5 pi feet. Let's try circling that again. Feet. Oh, we also need to find sector area. Don't get so fast, Mr. Peacock. Sector area. So in this case, remember, we do area, which is pi times, in this case, our radius of 11 squared. That's 121 pi. Now, after that, we multiply it once again by 315 over 360. So that's once again going to be most of the 121. Specifically, it ends up being 100, and, not an 8, 
it's 105.875 pi feet squared. So now let's try this one. Uh, we're going to talk about the arc length first. The arc length in this case, uh, remember that's 2 times 13 pi. So that's 26 pi. And then after that, we multiply that by 270 over 360. Now you might be noticing from the picture, or if you can do this, the math there, that ends up being about 3 fourths. And we put that in we get 19.5 pi when we put it in our calculator feet. So now let's talk about sector area. Once again, in this case, we're doing pi times 13 squared, or 169 pi. Now, after that, we once again multiply by 270 over 360. What we end up getting there is 126.75 pi feet squared. And that's how we find arc length and sector area, which means I think we're done. But, oh no, a new foe has appeared. Oh, what could it be? Radiance. Now, if any of you have ever heard of radians, it's probably from me telling you to check your calculator to see if you are currently in radian mode. Because remember, up until now, you've wanted to be in degree mode. And this is what it looks like on a lot of your calculators. Now, let's talk about, though, how we actually, what radians are. So radians are just a different way of measuring the distance around a circle. So let's talk about how radians are named. So radians are named off of, of all things, the radius, or r. The radius is the distance is the distance from the center to any point in a circle, or r. Now if we take that same distance and put it into on the circle, we get this distance right here. That is one radian. Now as we keep going, you'll see that the amount of radians that are in one half of a circle is a little over three. In fact, it ends up being exactly 3.14 radians, or pi radians, is half a circle, or 180 degrees. That means 360 is double that, or 2 pi radians. Now, what we do is we want to convert these degrees into that alternate form of radians. You can also use radians for trig, which you should have noticed from whenever I told you that you had to switch it into degree mode so you weren't in radians. So the way that we do this is we take a degree, any degree. In this case, we're going to use 280 degrees. Then what we do is we divide it by 180. Now you might be going, Mr. Peacock, why not 360? And that is because, remember, pi is just 180 degrees. 360 is 2 pi. So this is going to be better if we divide it by 180 degrees. And so for this part, even if I could simplify it, I'm just going to put this into a calculator. I'm going to go 280 divided by 180. And I get 1.5 repeating. Now, the thing is, that's not a good answer for me. I need it to be something else. Specifically, what I need it to be is a fraction. So once I have that answer, I'm going to press the math button, which is the third one, which is the one right below the alpha button on your calculator. So I'm going to press math. Then the first option is frac, so I'm going to press enter on that and enter again. And I end up getting that it is specifically 14 ninths. Now for the easiest part. Now you might go, this is multiply the fraction by pi. But you might remember from what we've been doing up until now, we're not going to actually say times pi. We're just going to say 14 pi over 9. And that is our degrees in radians. So 280 becomes 14 pi over 9. Now that we've talked about how to convert degrees to radians, let's talk about how to convert radians to degrees. So if we are wanting to convert radians to degrees, our first step is to have a radian measure. In this case, our radian measure is 
5 pi over 3. The first thing we do is divide the fraction by pi, which is just going to cancel these out, so we have 5 thirds. Then I go into my calculator, I put 5 divided by 3, and then I multiply it by 180. So times 180. And I end up getting 300 for this number, 300 degrees. And that's it. That's how we convert radians to degrees. We just talked about how to convert degrees to radians. We talked about sector area. We talked about arc length. We've done all of that. Now, please, try your hardest on the homework if you have it. And just, you know, like and subscribe because this is also on YouTube. Smash that like button.